Hi, and welcome back to another Siemens S7-1200 and factory I.O. tutorial. In this video, we'll start coding for the removal of pallets from the rack. We'll be using commands like exclusive all with the encode to detect empty spaces where pallets can be placed. We then make use of the decode with the or command to update the status of pallets in the rack. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So we are going to start coding to allow us to remove pallets from the rack when we require. But to do this, we need to change some of the existing SCL code used that allows us to load the rack. Therefore, in this video and the next one, we will be concentrating on creating the new code necessary to load the rack so that it is compatible with the code we will implement in later videos to remove pallets from the rack. That's why we'll be using the commands I mentioned during the introduction to this video, namely exclusive or, encode, decode, and or. Using these commands will require three main changes to the existing code. Firstly, we need to check which row has space available. Then secondly, once we've decided on the row, we need to check what position in the row is available, essentially the destination. And lastly, once we place a pallet in the rack, we then need to update the row status information, which will then be checked when the next pallet requires loading. So let's make a start. Now, the first thing I would like to do before editing the code in the load function is place all the functions in main OB1. To do that, we simply drag them into the networks at the bottom of main OB1. So in network 10, we'll drag in B underscore remove. Then C underscore ladder underscore outputs in network 11. And finally, D underscore SCL underscore outputs in network 12. We'll then name all the networks. So network 9 is load pallets. Network 10 is remove pallets. Network 11 is ladder outputs. And finally, network 13 is SCL outputs. Oh, it looks as if I've named the wrong network. I'll just go back and name network 12 instead of 13. And then clear the name in network 13. Great, that's all done. So now let's open the load function ready for entering code. So the first thing we need to do is check to see if space is available in row one. And to do that, we check the previous sum of pallets one tag, which in this case is MW58 a 16-bit word. If the row is empty, then the value of the word is 0000, 0, 0, 0 in hex. If the row is full, then the value of the word is 03FE in hex. The least significant bit is not used, and we will see why in a moment, but essentially positions 1 to 9 represent the nine positions on row one in the rack. So we need to write code that checks to see if previous sum of pallets one is less than 0, 03 FE. And if it is, then set bit R1 M3.0 to true. 
As long as R1 is true, we will then be loading pallets into row one until R1 is false. So let's enter the code for this now. We'll make a bit of space and then enter a new region and we'll name it check rows. Even though at this point we're only checking row one as eventually we'll use this region to check for space in all rows. Now let's enter if previous sum of pallets one is less than 16 hash 0 3 fe then r1 is equal to true. Else r1 is equal to false. End if and then end region. I'll just tidy the code up a little by putting the semicolon after the else. Great, that's done. So we have checked if we can place pallets in row one. Now we need to know where in row one we can place a pallet. And to do that, we use a combination of the exclusive or and the encode logic commands. To explain this, let's reset the previous sum of pallets one to zero again, and then take a look at the all ones word. As this word's tag name suggests, it has all its bits from position one to nine set to one. We don't need the other bits as we aren't using them. So they are left set to zero. Then when we carry out an exclusive or command on the all ones and previous sum of pallets one, the result is placed in sum of pallets one, as can be seen. We can then use the encode command to find out where to place the next pallet in the rack. Let's have a look at how this works. OK, at present, we have previous sum of pallets with all zeros in, which means row one is completely empty. And when we carry out an exclusive or on previous sum of pallets one with all ones, it gives us the result shown in sum of pallets one. Now, if we encode sum of pallets one, it gives us the real number of one, which we store in the word temp destination as binary, shown here. So why did the encode give us this result? Well, encode looks for the least significant bit that is set to one from position one onwards and returns the position number of that least significant bit. The position number can then be used to indicate where to place a pallet because the position in the rack is currently empty. In our case, we will store that number in temp destination. Right, let's look at another example. We'll clear the contents of sum of pallets one and clear the temp destination result. Then we will change the contents of previous sum of pallets one to all ones, except for position seven and five, which are set to zero. This means these two positions in the rack would be empty. Then if we carry out an exclusive or again, the result in sum of pallets one would be set to one in these two empty positions, seven and five. Then when we carry out an encode on sum of pallets one, the result is five because the least significant position where a one is detected is position five, which means we can now place a pallet in position five in the rack. Let's enter the code for this now. So under the check rows region, 
we will create another region and call this one destination. We'll enter if R1 is true. Then sum of palettes one is equal to all ones exclusive or previous sum of palettes one. Next line temp destination is equal to encode. and replace by tin with sum of palettes one and inside the bracket enter in equals and enter semicolon at the end. Now we enter destination is equal to temp destination. Now we can end the if statement and then end the region statement. Now you may think we could have just placed destination in place of temp destination on line 28. However, we'll come to this when we add code for additional rows in the rack. At the moment, we're only working on row one. Okay, let's move down to region step four and we can see the statement destination equals destination plus one. Well, this is no longer needed as the destination is now calculated by the code we just entered above. Therefore, we could just delete this line, but I'll just comment it out. OK, that's done. Now, once a palette is placed in the rack, then we need to update the row status information, which will then be checked when the next palette coming through needs to be placed into the rack. And we will do this by adding an additional step between step seven and eight. We'll do this using a combination of the decode and or commands. So let's go over how this is done on the right hand side of the screen again before we add the code. If you can remember, we isolated the least significant empty space in the rack by using XOR and storing the result in sum of palettes one, followed by using the ENCODE command to convert that position, which in our case was position five, into a decimal, which is used to tell the stacker crane where to place the palette. Well, now we need to almost reverse that process to update the previous sum of palettes one, so that when another palette needs to be placed in the rack in row one, we can again calculate where there is space to place it. And we do that by using a combination of the decode and or commands. So let's clear the contents of the right hand green board and start with the temp destination, which contains the decimal value of five. If we decode this value, we get a word with position five set to one and all the rest set to zero. We'll then store this information in a temporary word called deck underscore output underscore reg. And I just named it like that. So it's a temporary field for decode output register. Next, we need to somehow combine this bit position with the previous sum of palettes one. And the way we do this is by carrying out an all command on deck underscore out underscore reg with the current contents of the previous sum of palettes one. We'll then place the result in the temporary word sum of palettes one and then update previous sum of palettes one by copying the contents of sum of palettes one into it. By carrying out an or command on the previous sum of palettes one and deck underscore out underscore reg, 
we have now updated the status of the rack by telling the PLC there is now a pallet in position 5 and that space is no longer empty. If that is a little unclear, it should make more sense when we code it. So let's do that now. As mentioned earlier, we are going to add a step in between region seven and the existing step eight. So we'll start by changing region step eight to step nine and also editing the numbering system in the region, changing the reference of eight to nine and then nine to 10. Then in region step nine, we change any reference of nine to 10. Okay, that's done. Now let's enter another region. And this one is going to be region step eight. Now let's enter if place palette sequence number is equal to eight, then deck underscore out underscore reg is equal to decode and enter temp destination in unit in and enter in is equal to before temp destination not forgetting to add the semicolon after the brackets now we have to carry out the or command so sum of palettes one is equal to previous sum of palettes one or deck output reg. And then we make previous sum of palettes one equal to sum of palettes one. Now you may think that is an unnecessary step as we didn't need to use sum of palettes one and instead made previous sum of palettes one equal to previous sum of palettes one or deck output reg. But I thought it might help explain things a little better by doing things this way. Okay, let's continue. We now need to reset R1 ready for the next scan to see if there is space in row one. And if there is, we set R1 true again. Finally, we place nine into place palette sequence number. End if, then end the region. Great, that's the load code complete for row one. But before we upload the code, we need to add some code to the startup, OB100. So let's go into that now. As you can see, I've already entered code, which initializes the variables we've just added to the load function to zero. Although, as we can see, I've initialized the all ones word to 03 fe hex this is quite straightforward to add for example even though we aren't using r2 yet we can initialize it here by simply typing in r2 is equal to zero and then enter so let's download all the code to the plc i'll just compile it all first to check for any errors it all seems okay so let's upload the code oops i just pressed compile again
I think we're all used to doing this by now and viewing the messages and the options that come up on screen. So I'll just do things the way I normally do. OK, I'm just going to set up a watch table. We can clear most of the things here and monitor some of the variables we've just entered in the code. So let's enter previous sum of palettes one. Then we'll enter destination. Then place palette sequence number. I'll just change the display format for previous sum of palettes one to binary so that we can monitor where palettes are in the rack. I'll select the glasses to actually see the individual bits. Great. Now let's connect factory IO and place the PLC into run mode. Oh, let's monitor R1 as well. And as we can see, it is true because row one currently has space in it. I've noticed I'm monitoring place palette sequence number twice, but that is not a problem. I'll just leave it be for now. Now let's start up the conveyors and see what happens. OK, palettes start to travel down the conveyor. I'll just widen the monitor value field so we can see all the appropriate bits. Let's see what happens to previous sum of palettes one. As soon as a palette is placed in the rack, position one updates when the first palette is lowered and touches the rack, indicating we have our first palette in position one in the rack. Let's continue and watch previous sum of palettes one mimic the palettes in the rack. I'm just going to speed up factory IO so we will get to the end of the row quicker. OK, twice the speed. Still slow, so I'll fast forward a little to just before we get to palette 8 and we'll see what happens. As we can see, as soon as we get to position 9 in a rack, we can go no higher. Uh, we just keep trying to place a pallet into the same position over and over, when we really would like to go to the next row in the rack. So let's stop factory IO and consider the changes necessary to avoid this problem by coding for other rows in the rack, which we'll do in the next video. So as always, thank you for watching. So until next time, hope you found this video informative. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to learn more, then please click the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be informed as soon as a new video is uploaded. 
Please see the links in the description should you wish to get a free 30 day license at Factory.io and also check out my Patreon account. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.